Hello everyone, and welcome to the channel. If you're returning, thanks for coming back. In today's video, we'll be discussing the Interactive Brokers Trading Platform. As you can see on the screen, this platform offers many customization options. I'll share my favorite setup, which I believe will be helpful, especially for those new to Interactive Brokers. Let's get started. When you open Interactive Brokers, you can create a new layout. We'll begin by adding components. While you can add a watchlist, I'll start with the scanner, which is usually my first step in setting up a layout. We'll use the advanced scanner. It has many criteria you can configure. First, let's add other components to our layout. We have the scanner. Now, let's add a quote view. This allows you to see the price, volume, and other details for any ticker you select, giving you a better understanding of its pricing. Next, we'll add a chart. We are going to use the advanced chart, which is the latest version in TWS, Trader Workstation. For order entry, I choose BookTrader. BookTrader displays actual orders and also functions like time and sales and level 2, showing the order book depth. On the chart, I'll add some basic indicators I frequently use, RSI, MACD, and moving averages. Once the chart is set up, we'll configure the scanner. When deciding what to look for, I often start by looking for the most active stocks to get an overall market view. As you can see, many companies appear, but we want to narrow this down to save time. Therefore, I set the price to be above $1 to avoid penny stocks. This is a personal preference, and you can choose what suits you. I also filter for stocks where the market cap is above 100 million. Note, in the scan, if you want 100 million, you just input 100, as the field interprets the value in millions. That's why we might not get results if we input the full number initially. Now we see stocks with market caps we're looking for. Let's narrow it further. I'll add another filter. Each filter option often has a question mark icon where you can read detailed explanations. For now, I want to add percentage change. If you're looking for stocks gapping up, you might set the percentage change to, for example, 30% and up. You can also name your scanner setup, like gap up 30%, so you can easily recall its purpose. Let's test the scan. As you can see, I might look at a short time frame like 3 minute volume because if a stock is very active, it will show significant volume quickly, which is preferable to a stock that is thinly traded. The current time of this recording is midday, about 2 or 3 hours after the market opened, so volume is affected. For pre-market scanning, you might adjust volume criteria, perhaps to a minimum of 500,000 minutes, 3 minutes, 1 minute, to see price action accordingly. I also want to see news. It's important to understand the reasons behind stock movements or gaps. I choose company-specific news and position the window for easy viewing, often with headlines in a detail pane side by side. You can resize these elements as needed. You can lock and save your layout. You can also set ranges for filters. For example, with percentage change, you might look for stocks that have dropped significantly, say down 50%. If the news doesn't justify such a large drop, these can present opportunities, especially for larger cap stocks that might bounce back. After adjusting filters, remember to rescan or click search. You can then sort the results, for instance, by descending or ascending percentage change. I prefer to see the highest movers at the top. This setup essentially gives you a powerful trade idea generation system, similar to what you might pay for with third party scanners, all within interactive brokers. This is how I use it, and I find it quite effective for traders at any level. As you can see, my news window is active. You can click on a headline to read the details and understand the reason for a stock's movement. Pay attention to news impact scores, E.G, numbers like 95 and green, higher numbers often indicate more significant news. That's pretty much it. If you liked this video and found it helpful, please don't forget to subscribe. If you have any questions, drop them in the comments below, and I'll try to make similar videos in the future. If you have questions regarding interactive brokers or specific software features, feel free to ask.